Where can you hit the open road and stretch your legs amid larger-than-life origami, rising out of red rock landscapes, or feast on authentic New Mexico-style hatch green chili cheeseburgers in a historic mining town that served as a set for hit movies and TV shows, or take on the Santa Fe Century bike race and toast with truly local beer Cheers. at Cheers. the state's oldest craft brewery. It's all along the Turquoise Trail National Scenic Byway, which runs between Santa Fe and Albuquerque and the southwestern state of New Mexico. We're driving and biking this epic scenic byway. I guess I should have done a little training before I came. It's just over 50 miles long, just outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico, one of my favorite places. So let's dive into this episode of the Travels with Darley podcast, an experiential podcast which immerses you in authentic food, culture, history, and adventure with locals as the guides. So if you like learning about new places to travel or just want to escape, please subscribe. We're starting south of Santa Fe along the Turquoise Trail Byway with artist and entrepreneur Kevin Box. He and his wife are the masterminds of Origami in the Garden. Their studio and collection of very large origami sculptures was planned by the Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture and is located along the Turquoise Trail. It's here at his sustainable studio amid the rugged landscapes that you'll find delicate looking yet durable soaring birds, galloping ponies, and chipper chipmunks. A marvel of creativity. When I arrive, Kevin Box is using a hand truck to push one of his latest works across his white cement driveway into the open air garage bay of his large studio and home. On top of the dolly is a rock topped with a series of white origami birds set one on top of the other like a Jenga tower and rising several feet above him into the sky. He's wearing light wash jeans, a blue plaid button down, and funky white rimmed sunglasses. Inside, I hear the sounds of soldering as another artist works on a large bird sculpture amid the beautiful chaos that is his desert studio. Kevin's taking us on a tour of his garden, a whimsical world of the origami I've never been able to properly fold that he and his team have managed to make into colossal sculptures. So Kevin, explain what I'm seeing here. This is our crane that we've seen so many times in origami. This is a really important part of uh, the storytelling that I've created and the inspiration and why I love origami because we can tell two stories, what we see with our eyes in the outer world, but what we all know is most important is invisible, right? Like who we are, our thoughts and our feelings. And when you unfold origami, this incredible pattern emerges. And to me, that's really an important part of why I do what I do. And this is a great example of the same subject matter, same uncut square of paper, but folded by a PhD physicist named Robert J. Lang, who got all the detail, including three toes on each leg, all the feathers, and you can see that when it's unfolded. Um, now, I can't fold this, so I collaborate with- <laughs> Definitely couldn't fold this. <laughs> with great, great masters like this. But there's just accessibility to it. You know, anybody can pick up a piece of paper and learn to fold a simple design, but the sky's the limit. We walk along a sandy path, past a large blue and red horse and foal sculpture, as Kevin explains more of his ethos. Kevin, how did you come up with this concept in general? As an artist and a designer, I think, I looked at how do I create something different and fresh with ancient objects and ancient subject matter and ancient materials and combining something very fragile with something very durable like paper and bronze. Sculpture and metal casting dates back 6,000 years, so how do I make that different in a new era? So many of these, maybe all of them, are collaborations with other artists, it's not just you. Yeah, I really feel like we're more like a, in a band, an origami band, and I didn't want to find myself all alone in a studio, you know, working away by myself. I really like people and I'm a gregarious person. But from a standpoint of design and beauty, you know, origami is very sculptural at a small scale. And I just thought, you know, this is being overlooked. A lot of people don't consider it as a fine art, but if you blow it up and sort of bring it to a different medium, it really has that sense of beauty and we can examine the, the design and the details and bringing it into metal just makes it into a, a museum quality work of art. We pass monumental origami in the shape of bison, turtles, 
and one Kevin calls stone, paper, scissors, which reminds me of the game rock, paper, scissors. The rock base is capped with a white paper crane and a pair of blue handled scissors. We walk further to see Kevin's wife, Jennifer, standing by a sculpture of olive branches, which form the outline of a tall house topped with a roof under which two white origami doves sway in the breeze. So this is Spirit House, which is really inspired by uh, an experience my wife and I had, Jennifer, of building this amazing place together. Kevin and Jennifer hold hands, standing alongside the Spirit House. We built a house from scratch in our 30s and everybody thought we were quite ambitious, you know, something we've been told uh, our whole lives, I think. But when we, when we built the property, there were olive trees on the property and this is cast bronze olive branches, which is a, a Greek symbol of peace and compromise as well. And we created this as a collaboration together, sort of as a natural you know, inspiration from having built a home and figuring things out. So we built this beautiful dream home for two lovely birds. I love it, and I love when I see a harmonious husband and wife team working together and building a house together, because you know that it required a lot of compromises, but it looks like it turned out okay. <laughs> what do you think? We're happy. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer's smile says it all. And with that, I'm on to my next location along the Turquoise Trail National Scenic Byway. Santa Fe Brewing Company is another turquoise trail stop that's worth a diversion. Housed in a series of flat-roofed, adobe-colored buildings, Santa Fe Brewing Company encompasses tens of thousands of square feet of beer hall, brewery, and outdoor space, where locals and travelers congregate for beer produced and packaged right on site, as well as events like local bands, food trucks, and outdoor family-friendly games. Entrepreneur Brian Locke, walks me through the factory floor abuzz with activity. Well over six feet tall and with sandy blonde hair falling just above his shoulders, a scruffy circle beard, and in a short sleeve plaid button down and jeans, he kind of reminds me of Aiden, played by John Corbett in Sex in the City. Not a bad guide. Beers are coming off conveyor belts and being packed into crates, stacked up towards the ceiling. So Brian, a lot of beer to choose from here. Yes, lots of beer. What is different about the beer that you're making? Is it the water or what, what makes it taste different? All of our beers are made with 100% natural well water. And so I feel like that is a big reason that we're successful as a brand. And it kind of um, distinguishes us a little bit from the competition and other breweries in the state. So interesting because they say like in New York, you know, get a New York bagel because the water's different. So I guess when you're in Santa Fe, you got to get a Santa Fe Brewing Company beer because the water's different. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. We head through the dimly lit beer hall and out back to an outdoor area where a fire pit, picnic tables, Adirondack chairs, lawn games, and food trucks welcome all ages. Brian suggests grabbing tortas or tacos from a Mexican fusion food truck, and we order and plop down at wrought iron tables on a wooden patio adjoining the colorful food truck. Brian hands me a plate of soft chicken tacos covered in green chili salsa and a pint of beer. All right. Green chili for the traveler, the tourist, and red chili for the local. Yes. <laughs> You're going hot. I'm going hot. The red's hotter here. Let's try these tacos. Well, All right. We got a lot of the green chili on this one. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Just enough crunch and just enough heat for me. And the cheese is really a compliment. Well, I'm excited to try this beer. I understand you're giving me kind of a local standard, like what I would maybe want to try if I'm visiting. 7K IPA is a West Coast tropical IPA. It's the number one selling IPA in the state, and it's really um, our flagship beer. It's a palatable beer, and it's not super hoppy. Cheers. Cheers. I do try a lot of the local beers on my travels, so you know, <laughs> I think I'm gonna start becoming a beer connoisseur. Well, good. <laughs> One of the joys of travel is encountering new challenges. Sometimes those challenges are natural parts of your experience, and sometimes you choose right off the bat to include them in your itinerary. I chose to travel to Santa Fe in May in order to participate in the Santa Fe Century an annual bike race that's been held in northern New Mexico for over three decades. 
cyclists can choose to ride 20, 50, or 100 miles either on paved roads or along nearby mountain biking trails. Okay. I'm riding with local Cynthia Baca, who's participated in the Santa Fe Century over the past few years. So, Cynthia, why do people do this race? I think to say that they've accomplished 100 miles, the challenge, the hills, and we're on a scenic byway. I'm seeing the sign. Yes. Oh, yeah, we are. Love it. One of the attractions of this particular bike race is the course. Cyclists travel along the Turquoise Trail, and in particular, pass through old mining towns along routes once traveled by Spanish missionaries, outlaws, and Confederate soldiers. One of the highlights is the town of Madrid, spelled like Madrid, Spain, but pronounced here as Madrid. If you visit Madrid, you'll see why locals decided to say it a little differently. Because in Madrid, everything is done a little differently. We pass old mining cabins that have been turned into art galleries and a coffee shop, and a popular haunt for motorcycle riders, the Mine Shaft Tavern. And a ways out of town, we're back to smooth cycling. Well, Cynthia, you love those downhills, but then it leads you to those uphills. Yes, that's correct. Here we go. <laughs> The most difficult part of the race for most is Heartbreak Hill. Okay, let's do this hill. Let's do this. A mile long and at an average 12% grade, you'll see people ride in all kinds of ways, including walking their bikes in this grueling part of the race. Now it's getting hard. For most out-of-towners like me, Santa Fe's higher altitude makes simply breathing a challenge. Cynthia gets to the top before me and cheers me on. Come on, darling, you can do it! You survived heartbreak here! Woo! Only 60 more miles to go. Post-race and after a spa experience in Santa Fe, I circle back to the town of Madrid. If you're a fan of quirky small towns, green chili cheeseburgers, or visiting locations where TV shows and movies film, or all of the above, Madrid should be on your list. Here, travelers shop for the blue-green turquoise for which the turquoise trail is named, and they stop to refuel at the Mine Shaft Tavern, which I noticed on my cycling adventure. The Mine Shaft Tavern served as a stand-in for the Red Pony in the Longmire TV series, and the town was filmed for the movie Wild Hogs with John Travolta and Tim Allen. They also have an award-winning green chili cheeseburger, that I dare you to pair with the cucumber chili margarita. It's a winning combination. The even smaller town of Cerritos is also nearby and has also served as a film location for the 1980s flick Young Guns and has a truly rugged Old West vibe. The scenery along the turquoise trail is worth the trip all on its own. But as usual, it's the experiences through the people that I find the most awesome. So next time you're looking for an easy road trip that you can accomplish in one day or over a few, fly into Santa Fe or Albuquerque and take a step on the wild side where art, food and drinks, adventure and history combine along the Turquoise Trail Scenic Byway. I'm Darlie Newman and I've been traveling the world for over a decade and a half and have been filming for my PBS and streaming series Travels with Darlie for many years too. I love sharing adventures and people who help us all understand life a bit more and perhaps can help us find the joy in the everyday. Because life is short, so you have to grab the reins. Grab on to more life and travel adventures by searching and subscribing to this Travels with Darlie podcast on iHeart or wherever you listen to podcasts. And stay tuned for more adventures in and around Santa Fe, New Mexico and beyond. <laughs>